microprocessor is an IC which has only CPU inside them. Microprocessors don't have RAM, ROM or any other peripheral on chip. The system designer has to add them externally to make microprocessor functional. Some example of microprocessor are 8086, Intel Pentium, Go2Duo, i3 and i5. Application of microprocessor includes desktop PC, notepad, laptop, etc. Microcontrollers have processing unit CPU in addition with fixed amount of RAM, ROM, input output and other peripherals all embedded on a single chip. Different manufacturer produces microcontroller with wide range of features available in different versions. Some microcontroller manufacturers are Atmel, Motorola, Microchip, NXP, Freescale. Microcontrollers are designed to perform specific tasks. Depend on input, some processing need to be done and the output is delivered. For example, washing machine, camera, pen drive, TV remote. Since applications are very specific, they required very less amount of resources like RAM, ROM and input output port. Hence, they can be embedded on a single chip. This in turn reduce the size of product and the cost. Microprocessors find application where the tasks are unspecific like photo editing, creating document, developing software, playing game. In such a cases, the relation between input and the output is not defined and they require large amount of resources like RAM, ROM. Clock frequency at which microprocessor operate are very high as compared to microcontrollers. Normally microprocessors work in gigahertz frequency range while microcontrollers work in few megahertz frequency range. Undoubtedly microcontroller is far cheaper than microprocessor. However, microcontroller cannot be used in place of microprocessor and using microprocessor is not advised in place of microcontroller as it will make the application costly. Microprocessor cannot be used standalone. They need other peripherals like RAM, ROM, buffer, input output port, etc. And hence the system designed around the microprocessor is very costly. In case of microprocessor, since the memory and input output port has to be connected externally, circuit become very large. And due to external component, entire power consumption is very high. Hence, it is not suitable to use with devices running on stored power like batteries. Since memory and the input output port are present internally in microcontroller, the microcontroller based circuits are very small. The total power consumption is less in case of microcontroller and we can use microcontroller with the devices running on stored power supply like battery. Eight zero five one is a 8-bit microcontroller originally developed by Intel in mid-80s. A typical 8051 microcontroller also known as Intel MCS51 and here are the configuration of that particular microcontroller. RAM 128 byte, ROM 4 kilobyte, two 16 bit timers, one serial port, four input output port, 8 bit data width and 16 bit address width. Since 8051 is a 8-bit microcontroller, it can read, write and process 
8 bit of data there are bunch of manufacturers like atmel nxp texas instrument who manufacture their own versions of 8051 microcontroller irrespect of manufacturers internal hardware design that is internal architecture of 8051 microcontroller remains more or less same here diagram shows inner architecture of 8051 in block diagram style cpu central processing unit it's the heart of microcontroller mainly contains alu and cu alu stand for arithmetic logical unit as name suggest it used to perform arithmetic and logical operations cu nothing but a control unit responsible for all the timing of communication process between cpu and other peripherals program memory also known as code memory is a read only memory used to store the cpu instructions program written into this memory will retain even if the power is down or the system is reset data memory also known as random access memory or ram is responsible for storing the value of variables temporary data immediate result for the proper operation of microcontroller ram is a volatile memory and generally organized as a register and user accessible memory locations io port that is input output port io ports provide microcontroller a physical connection with outside world this port can be configured as a input port or output port input port provides a gateway for passing data from outside world to the microcontroller with the help of sensors and output port allows microcontroller to control external devices like motor led etc oscillators oscillator is used to generate a clock signal clock signal allows the operation inside the microcontroller and other part to be synchronous clock generator is the integral part of microcontroller architecture and the user has to provide additional timing circuitry in the form of crystal timer hardware is used to generate a delay and the same hardware can be used to count external event on t0 and t1 pin of microcontroller serial port serial port used for serial communication between microcontroller and other serial device interrupt control block this block is used to control external and internal interrupt in 8051 microcontroller program memory code memory timer serial port input output port interrupt control block and cpu all are interfaced together through system bus new generation microcontroller like p8951rd2 microcontroller from manufacturer nxp formerly known as philips contain more advanced features like 1kb of data ram 64kb of code memory more number of timer spi and watchdog timer like features even more advanced 8051 microcontroller like cc2541 microcontroller from texas instrument contains advanced features like analog comparator opam adc usb like facilities even more advanced features like analog aes and ds encryption system and rf modules okay now let's try to write the c language code to program 8051 microcontroller 
for this purpose we required software from kyle i hope you have already downloaded this software okay so this software it contain three different window one is editor window project window and build output window to create a new project you have to go project new new vision project then you give name to the project let's say project led is the name of my project okay i have created one folder name project on desktop and i am saving this project in that folder then you have to choose the microcontroller that you want to use i want to use p89 v51 rd2 the advanced a051 microcontroller from nxp formerly known as philips then okay yes and hence you got here your source group folder now you have to click new our editor window will appear you have to save this file let's say led is my uh, c file name i have to save this file with extension dot c save and the same dot c file it is not there in your project folder so you have to add it so right click on source group add new file add the existing file to the group and double click on led so file get added and then close so now you are ready to write the code okay now uh, let's say i have connected leds say eight different leds to port 1 pin and i want to blink those leds so now let's try to write the code for it first of all you have to include the header file which is register52.h then in void main you have to write your code so i want to blink the led that's why first i will make them on so whenever you want to give some values to the port in c language you have to write it like this so port p1 equals to the value 0 cross 0 ff that means i am giving logic 1 to the port p1 pins so all it pins would be logic 1 then since it's a blinking operation it should remain on for some delay so i'm putting a delay by writing this function ms delay then i will turn on those leds so i will turn off those leds by writing port p1 equals to 0 cross 0 0 writing 0 will make those uh, leds zero because the pin uh, of port 1 will get logic zero values then again i will call some delay so since i want this blinking operation in a continuous manner i will include it under while one so most of the embedded codes we always write it under while one loop then let's try to write code for ms delay to create a delay of millisecond what i am doing here is i am using simple for loop delay is nothing but making uh, microcontroller busy doing some operation which is not uh, exactly relevant to your main code so we are by writing this code we are making it uh, making microcontroller busy to do some simple operations okay so this is how we can generate a delay using two for loop this particular for loop we have what i am writing j equals to 0 j is less than 1 3 3 and j plus plus so this particular in this particular for loop j would be initially zero then it get incremented by one till it reach uh, to value 1 1 3 so it's simple operation so this particular operation a for loop will generate a delay of 1 millisecond so by writing this for loop under this one more for loop will make a total delay of time into 1 millisecond so this delay 
will give me the value of total delay time into 113 and that value you have to put it here in this function so i will write 100 that means 1000 multiplied by 1 second so that will lead to the delay of 1 second okay now let's compile this code for compiling you have to click on all these three button first translate you got zero error build and rebuild like this so i got zero errors and zero warning suppose you got a error so whenever you got error you have to simply double click on error and you will get one pointer on the error position and hence you can clear that error okay so there is no error now before you debug the code you have to set some properties for this microcontroller for that you have to go to target options you have to select the operating frequency as 11.0592 megahertz then output and you want to create a hex file yes then okay again do translate build and rebuild if all went correct then you have to go to debug to check whether your code is working correctly or not since it's a evaluation uh, trial version of the software you will get a restriction on your compile code of uh, at max 2k size you can compile then okay the beauty of this software is you can debug your code line by line and you can watch that particular operation on the register since i am assuming that i have connected leds to port p1 so i am going to peripherals port p1 so here you get a port p1 so you can see the status of this pin port p1 pin in this window so let's run this code step by step to run this code step by step you have these three buttons step step over and run to cursor line so i am using step over button so when i am doing this so when the first instruction get executed the p1 got all one values then delay and when this instruction get executed you can see here you got port 1 in values 0 like this so it would be in a, since we have written this line of code in while one so it will be in a continuous loop if you want to go into the delay part in that case you have to use the first button step the step allow you to go inside the for loop so you can see here now you are in a for loop i am using this step button like this so to come out of this for loop or whenever you come want to come out of the function you have to click on step out button and let's see if you want to run this code continuously you can run using this button so now you can see the led blinking now uh, in this code i have created a delay of 1 second but how you can verify this that led is blinking after the interval of 1 second only to verify the working we have here logic analyzer once you click on the logic analyzer button it looks something like this so you have to add the signal that you want to monitor so go to setup i want to monitor here port p1 so i will type port p1 and enter that's close so now you can see here the square wave on off waves so let's stop it and see that whether we are getting correct delay or not so you can use this cursor option here like this and you can see here the 
devalue the delay value is getting changed this way so when i move it the value is change now you can see the delay is this way and we are in shit like this this delay value is 1.033 second that means approximately i am getting a delay of 1 second so likewise you can verify your code in kill software now i hope you understand the working of the code and how to use the software to debug your code now for better view of the system around the 8051 microcontroller you can use the software named proteus proteus is a circuit simulator software that we can use to build the system around 8051 microcontroller and we can dump the created hex file from our previous project to this software so let's start go to file create new project give the name to your project suppose i want to save this to again my same folder project folder with name proteus okay then next 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 finish then click on schematic capture click p and type 8051 so you will get an many microcontrollers related to 8051 the microcontroller that uh, we have used while uh, writing code for uh, in kyle software was p89051rd2 microcontroller from philips that particular microcontroller is not present in the proteus library so you can use any other microcontroller also so i am using here 8089c5 microcontroller the code written for p89051 microcontroller will also run on 8089c5 microcontroller because the basic internal architecture for both microcontrollers is same now i we have connected leds to port p1 so that's why i required leds to at i want this led as a animated feature so led anim and i want to use blue color let's say okay you connect the leds like this since i am using seven different leds you can take them like this okay okay you can connect them to your port pins like this and the another terminal of led should be grounded so terminal mode select ground connect ground to like this and that's it now uh what we can do you have to double click on 8089c51 you have to select 12 megahertz clock frequency or you can make it 11.0592 megahertz then you have to browse the hex file so go to objects and you will get the hex file this particular hex file is created when we uh, rebuild our code 
in kill software. So I selected that file, open, okay. So when I click on run button, when I click on run button over here, it start blinking. Now again, my question is, the LEDs are blinking, but whether this delay is one second or not, again, you can cross verify it by taking the virtual instrument called oscillator. For that, you have to stop this code animation, then the oscillator connect one of these port one pin to the input pin of uh, input terminal of oscillator and again run the code. So you will get the LED blinking here and one okay time per division you can adjust. I'm selecting here DC. Okay, so I got this square view here also. Now here you can see the you can measure the division 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5 multiplied by 0 0.2 is nothing but 1 second. So 0 0.2 microsecond multiplied by 5. This will give you 1 second. So hence, using this feature also you can verify your code working. Hi. In this video, I will tell you how you can burn code into the microcontroller flash memory or ROM memory. Normally we use compiler and assemblers to convert our written source code into the machine code. This machine code gets stored into the file with extension .hex. We require microcontroller programmer or burner to write the content of this file into the flash memory or the ROM memory of microcontroller. Microcontroller programmer or the burner is the hardware device accompanied with the software which is used to transfer the machine language code into the microcontroller ROM memory. The software of such a microcontroller programmer read data from the hex file stored on the PC and feed it to the microcontroller's memory. Such kind of softwares transfer data from PC to the hardware either using serial, parallel or USB port. Depend upon the way it interacts with PC, there are three types of microcontroller programmers. Parallel programmer, serial programmer and USB programmer. Parallel programmer uses the parallel port of PC. They are very low cost programmers, but most of the modern day desktop and the laptop, they don't have such parallel port. Hence, the parallel programmer are not widely used. Serial programmer, these programmers use the serial port to interact with PC via RS-232 protocol. And these are very popular among the microcontroller hobbyists. USB programmers use the USB interface to transfer the data from PC to the flash memory of microcontroller. The main advantage of using USB burner is that they are powered from the PC itself and hence there is no need of any additional power supply. In conventional method of burning the microcontroller, we have to take out the microcontroller from the application board and we have to put it into the universal programmer and then by using the burner software, we have to send the content of hex file from PC to the burner. Then the burner dump the code 
इन टू दी माइक्रो कंट्रोलर फ्लैश मेमोरी इन ऑर्डर टू रिमूव दिस प्रॉब्लम ऑफ रिमूविंग माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एवरी टाइम वी वॉन्ट टू प्रोग्राम इट मोस्ट ऑफ द मॉडर्न डेज माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स आर अपग्रेडेड विथ इन सिस्टम प्रोग्रामिंग फीचर्स मीन्स विदाउट रिमूविंग द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर फ्रॉम इट्स अप्लीकेशन सर्किट वी कैन प्रोग्राम द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर द लेटेस्ट माइक्रो कंट्रोलर ऑल्सो कम विथ फीचर्स लाइक बूट लोडर विच अलाउ सेल्फ बर्निंग कैपेबिलिटी टू द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर नेंस माइक्रो कंट्रोलर डोंट नीड एनी एडिशनल प्रोग्रामिंग हार्डवेयर विच रिड्यूस डेवलपमेंट कॉस्ट प्लीज नोट द कम्युनिकेशन बिटवीन द पी सी एंड द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर इट कैन बी थ्रू सीरियल पोर्ट यूएस बी पोर्ट और पैरल पोर्ट बूट लोडर बूट लोडर इज अ प्रोग्राम प्रेजेंट इन द फ्लैश मेमोरी ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर विच एनेबल्स द डाउनलोड ऑफ हेक्स फाइल डायरेक्टली इन टू द फ्लैश मेमोरी ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर जनरली बूट लोडर्स आर रिटर्न टू एम्पावर द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर विथ सेल्फ बर्निंग कैपेबिलिटीज द बूट लोडर प्रोग्राम कैन असेस बिल्टिन फेरीफेरल ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स लाइक यू एस बी यू आर कैन एंड एस पी आई टू एक्शन द डेटा बिटवीन फ्लैश मेमोरी ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर एंड पी सी सम माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स कम्स विद बिल्ट इन बूट लोडर लाइक पी एट नाइन बी फाइव वन आर डी टू माइक्रो कंट्रोलर फ्रॉम एन एक्स पी एंड सम माइक्रो कंट्रोलर्स दे डोंट हैव बिल्ट इन बूट लोडर्स इन दैट केस टू मेक सच अ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर सेल्फ प्रोग्रामेबल वी हैव टू बर्न द फ्लैश मेमोरी ऑफ माइक्रो कंट्रोलर विथ बूट लोडर कोड यूजिंग द माइक्रो कंट्रोलर प्रोग्रामर और बर्नर इंस्टॉलिंग बूट लोडर मीन्स द सम पार्ट ऑफ मेमोरी इन रॉम विल गेट ऑक्युपाइड बाय बूट लोडर कोड हिंस यूजर हैज टू डाउनलोड हिज प्रोग्राम टू द रिमेनिंग मेमोरी स्पेस use of bootloader greatly speed up the development process since we don't required to remove the microcontroller from the circuit in this video to explain you the complete burning process i am using p89v51rd2 microcontroller in this microcontroller there is 64 kb of flash memory and separate 8 kb of bootloader memory is present this particular microcontroller is with in system programming capability hence we required only vdd vss txd rxd and reset pin to program the microcontroller flash magic is a software tool from the nxp used to burn the microcontrollers manufactured by nxp if you are planning to use any other 805 microcontroller then you have to use the burner software provided by that particular 8051 microcontroller manufacturer this software read the content of dot hex file from the pc and send it to the microcontroller using serial protocol over rs232 standard you can download this flash magic software from the website flashmagictool.com if you are using desktop pc with a serial port then you can easily send data from pc to the microcontroller using serial port you only need a max 232 ic at the microcontroller side for voltage level conversion but if you are using laptop normally modern days laptop they don't have serial port in a such a condition we required to use serial to usb converter to transmit data from laptop to microcontroller there are different types of serial to usb or usb to serial converters are available in market out of all these i am using this particular usb to serial adapter from bafo
This comes with one USB cable, serial adapter and one CD. You will find the driver software inside this CD. It supports XP, Windows 7, 8 and 10. If you want, you can also download the latest version of the driver software from the website laptop. Send the data over USB port to the BAFO adapter. BAFO adapter convert the USB voltage levels to the RS232 standard voltage levels. Then out of 9 pins of this serial port, we only have to use 3 pins RXD, DXD and ground pin. DXD pin of the BAFO you have to connect to the RXD pin of the microcontroller board. RXD pin of BAFO you have to connect to TXD pin of the microcontroller board and ground you have to connect to the ground. Here is the 8051 microcontroller board that I am using to demonstrate you how you can burn the code from the PC to the microcontroller. Here this board is with P89V51RD2 microcontroller from NXP. Here it is the program slot which is with three different pins TXD, RXD and ground Max 232 level converter IC Power supply Reset button Here on this board I have only four LEDs connected to the port 1.4 to port 1.7 pin port 0 is connected externally to pull up registers here it is L293D motor driver IC if you want to drive the motors from the microcontroller you need to use this motor driver IC 